Dr. Harding, why do you call Martin Luther King the inconvenient hero? Mm -hmm. Well, the first thing that I should say is that I feel very comfortable in naming him since he was my friend. And ever since we began talking about establishing a national holiday honoring King in this country, it's been very clear to me that there has been a great tension. Many of those who, out of the best intention, wanted to see the country honor Martin, many of them knew, at least they felt they knew, that the country could not take Martin as he was. That somehow Martin would have to be somewhat domesticated in order for the country to deal with him. Because he was both a prophet seeking to speak the truth to the country and a lover seeking to grasp the country in his great affection for the country. And it's very hard, as you know, for us to take both of those energies at once. And there's always a temptation to want to ask the, the prophet to back off some and not to be so demanding on us and not to keep calling us to our best possibilities. And that was what King was about, calling us from our more easy, convenient stances in our old and not helpful ways, he was calling us beyond that, always calling us to go outside of that, calling us to give up, for instance, on the, the whole experience and teaching and living of white supremacy, calling us uh, to move away from the great levels of materialism that have always been so much a threat to our humanity and the humanity of others. And he was always calling us to look at the world not through the eyes of a, of a dominator, but through the eyes of sisters and brothers to the world. And those calls were hard for people to take. And on the other hand, people knew that there was something right about honoring King as our hero. And what essentially happened is that those who were responsible both at national levels and local levels for developing the traditions of honoring King chose the most convenient ways, the least challenging ways. And so, for instance, instead of taking the 1963 speech with its presentation of the ways in which Black people had been treated 
so unjustly and is cataloging of that injustice, they took the piece of the speech at the very end in which he was essentially saying that as long as we continue to struggle for a better country, then he has a dream that this can come. But we took that last piece, I have a dream, not talking anymore about the injustices, not talking about the struggle that is necessary to overcome the injustices, going as quickly as possible to the dream of the country with justice. And all through our treatment of King, we forgot the pieces that were most difficult for us to handle. Almost never in most of the celebrations is there any lifting up of his powerful statement against the war and against the machinery of war and against militarism and against our temptation to live as a new kind of imperial power in the world. We took him, we wrapped him in the most in most cases, in the most unchallenging attire, made him convenient to where we wanted to be, made him convenient to our unchallenged pathways. And so I have to call him an inconvenient hero because I'm convinced that the ways in which, by and large, he has been dressed, attired by the desire to create this national holiday in order to get the holiday, in order to keep the holiday, in order to make the holiday acceptable to all kinds of people, we have diminished him. And we have made him fit our convenience. And I'm quite convinced that he can never become all that he needs to become for us unless we are willing to open ourselves to the prophetic pastor, to the crier out for justice and rightness. Uh, and open ourselves to what would have to be called the very tough love that he wanted to share with us. Otherwise, he'll be a hero who has nothing to offer us except a dim reflection of ourselves, and we don't need any more of that.